Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video for you. Today, I'm breaking down the five main ways to break into the data science career path. On my channel, I talk a lot about how to set up your resume and your product portfolio, but I don't go enough into how to leverage these into a potential position. In this video, I walk through the five main ways to get into a company, starting first with the least effective and ending all the way with my number one best way to get in. The first way to break into a data science position is through a traditional resume drop. I believe this to be the least effective of the five approaches. From the data collected at Sharpest Minds, a data science mentoring company, they found that only one to 2% of resume drops actually ended up leading to an interview. This is an extremely low percentage, and it means that the average person needs to apply to 50 to 100 jobs to get just one interview. I personally don't like these odds, and luckily there are four better ways coming up. The second approach is to use a more specialized private job board. An example of this would be using a job platform available from your university as a student or an alumni. In most cases, this reduces the amount of applicants for each role you apply to. You're no longer competing against the general public, and now you're just competing with others from your university. There are also professional organizations or communities that you can be a part of that have private job boards. I'd get creative with the job boards you explore and look at places like startup incubators or VC firms, they often have positions. The third way to break in is through working with a recruiter. You can reach out to data science specific recruiters, but often they'll reach out to you if you've been doing incredible projects and sharing your work. Working with a recruiter increases your odds because they have existing relationships with companies and them vouching for you gives you additional social proof. Recruiters also do a lot of the legwork for you. They'll find opportunities on your behalf and can sometimes even help you with your resume and the application process. The fourth way is probably my favorite and the one that's least talked about. It's transferring into a data science role within the company you're already at. Most companies are interested in the happiness of their employees and also in saving money. If you move into a data science role within your current organization, from a different role obviously, they keep you happy and they also get to avoid the hiring costs associated with finding a new data scientist. Most people are afraid to ask their boss about exploring new tools and trying to pivot positions. You truly never know what's possible if you don't ask. They may even be willing to pay for your trainings. How crazy is that? To be completely clear though, this step really only works if you're in a role that is related to data science already. This strategy makes the most sense if you're in a data analyst or software engineering role, or if you're doing something relatively technical already. If you're not doing anything even close to technical, you can first try to pivot into a data analyst role and then slowly keep transitioning towards that data science role. A quick tip from my friend Tina Wong is that you can start picking up little data projects in your day job. If you show some initiative, your boss might even be all in for these. Almost all jobs these days require some data, so at the very least, there's an automation task or something along those lines that you can perform. If you do end up having to apply outside, you can still say that you worked on this data-related project on your resume at this current company. From what I've seen, the single best way to break into the field is through an employee referral. Again, the team at Sharpest Minds have seen that using this approach can increase your chances of getting an interview by upwards of 10 times. Having an employee refer you gives you instant credibility. Additionally, HR will usually not want to disappoint the existing employee, so they'll give you the benefit of the doubt in most cases. If it wasn't clear already, having a relationship with a company, either through a recruiter, a friend, or a previous existing job is what maximizes your chances. I know that I said there were only five ways, but there's actually a sixth bonus way that's a special treat for those of you that stayed till the end. It's getting an internship first. Usually data science internships are lower hanging fruits than traditional jobs, meaning they're easier to get. Often they're used to see if people would be a good fit for a full-time position over a long period of time. I kind of look at an internship as a really long interview with a fairly high chance of success. Do your best in these and you can greatly increase your chances of landing your first full-time data science job. As I say in many of my other videos, you should still work diligently on your resume and your project portfolio. If you have good work there, sometimes companies will even reach out to you. This is a really strong position to be in. They're actively interested in you already. 
This is borderline another bonus seventh way to get in, but it isn't something you have complete control over, so I wouldn't necessarily categorize it with the other one. I hope this video helped you to better understand your options for getting a job in the data science domain. As usual, thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.